Rail Saver Repair System hosted by RDA Impact. I'm Melissa Jules with RDA Impact and Tim Gearhart, product designer, former collision technician, and president of TG Products is your presenter today. The webinar will take approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And as always, we're recording it and we'll post it on our website under training videos as well as our YouTube channel. If you have questions during the webinar, type them in the chat box at the bottom right of your screen and I'll give them to Tim during the presentation. Now, I'll turn it over to Tim. Hello, thank you all for being here today. Um, again, Tim Gerhardt for TG Products. Um, I designed this rail saver system here for uh, improving the repair capability of uh, collision centers. Um, as you can see here in the photos, the tool reaches inside of a frame rail or a side member, um, expands from the inside out. So we'll show you how that works. Um, it's basically improving uh, repair capability and allowing shops to improve their bottom line. Um, also, the uh, paint jobbers that uh, sell supplies to those shops are improving their bottom line too because of the uh, improved repair capability leads to uh, some shops saving some vehicles from total loss. So we'll go to the next slide here. Um, the impact has improved or increased repair capability. Uh, we can repair more vehicles by gaining better access to the damaged area. Uh, reduce cycle time uh, when you can repair a part versus replacing it. Uh, obviously, it's faster than replacement in many cases, and there's less need for r and I. I mean, shops are under increased pressure to reduce their cycle time, so this is helping them out there. Um, also, reducing severity. Uh, there's, a, there's a lower cost to parts, uh, less r and I of uh, major parts, like engines, dashes, suspensions, and et cetera. Uh, and this product is also less invasive. When you're uh, replacing a frame rail or a side member, oftentimes, uh, you're, you're cutting into the vehicle, exposing it to future rust and corrosion. Um, also, you're, you're uh, leaving the, um, it, when you're repairing, you're leaving all the factory corrosion protection where it is. Uh, you're not, uh, you're not uh, creating um, dangerous weld situations, and things all are left intact. So, um, basically, this is uh, kind of some photos of some pre-existing method that's out there. This, uh, a lot of people call this a duckbill or a clamshell spreader. Uh, in this photo, we have it uh, right here. The capacity of this is uh, one and a half tons. Um, the, the tool is inside of a, this is a cutout section of a Toyota um, land, land cruiser uh, full frame. Uh, this is high strength steel. And we've got the um, pump. At 6,500 psi, and we cannot budge the metal uh, using this tool. And the tool also leaves sharp protrusions on these edges here that come up into contact with the metal. If you can get the metal to move, typically you're going to wind up having a long stretch mark across here, um, which is actually just um, putting further damage into the into the rail and not really uh, solving the problem. So with our system, um, same same frame rail. Uh, we were able to, uh, 2,000 PSI, we were able to move the steel, um, and that's because of the design. Um, we we've also have a uh, convex dolly uh, for better metal finishing capabilities that don't leave the protrusions that you get with a uh, dust-filled type spreader or even a flat hydraulic ram. Um, you see the tool here. Um, our dollies mount on the end of the tool here. There are two screws on the end. We've got a multitude of dollies. I'll show you in a little bit later. Um, but the tool is long, uh, reaches uh, 27 and a half inches inside the rail to the hose here. It can be controlled because it's a solid piece, unlike the previous slide where um, we had the uh, clamshell spreader. Uh, it's basically uh, on the end of the hose. You can reach it in there a few inches before you lose control over it. Um, the tool operates in uh, any it, upside down, sideways, it doesn't matter. It's hydraulic, so basically a wedge pushing on a wedge. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, so the product features, um, we've got precision frame rail and side member repair um, from the inside outward, pushing outward, um, with the, the uh, no heat necessary on full frame vehicles. You see the slide before was a we had a Tundra high strength steel frame, and um, seen many repairs on that without any heat necessary. Uh, works on Ford, Dodge, um, GM um, full frames. Never, never had to use heat. Um, we've got four tons of pressure with 1.5 inches of expansion, and 
and you can see it's right on a expansion in a second. Um, again, it repairs up to 27 and a half inches deep. The metal finishing dollies just give uh, the ability to uh, metal finish this type of repair, which is required because it's a structural repair. Uh, you can't just um, kind of rough it out and bond this, this type of repair up. This is a structural repair. Uh, it's required to be free of all protrusions and um, deformation. Um, and typically, most OEMs require no heat. Um, uh, we've got the lean storage system. So the, the tool now comes with a plastic flow molded case. There's a hole in the end of the tool and the case. There's also a wall mounting bracket that's not shown here, but it's designed to hang on the wall next to the frame machine so that everything is in one place uh, right there by the frame rack. So uh, all the repairs can happen there and then uh, car moves on to the rest of the production. So how the rail saver works, uh, I've got some slides here. Basically what we're using is a four-ton pump and a uh, out here there's a four-ton ram that drives this wedge bar, this wedge past this wedge, slowly transferring it outward. And as you can see, it raises the height. And so this is basically, uh, I like to call it a solid adjustable dolly inside the frame. Um, it's solid because this is a solid mass, the technicians can use their uh, body hammer to hammer down the high spots that surround the uh, low spot as they're pressurizing it. And uh, it just gives them a very solid uh, repair inside. So here are our uh, metal finishing dollies. We have this red uh, universal mounting plate right here. These three dollies here can mount in a variety of ways. There's three holes on there. Um, they're there for reaching around internal parts. Um, sometimes you're coming in from this direction and you've got a welded on nut right here and just on the other side of it you have a dent for uh, some damage that you need to repair. This gives you the clearance so these welded on nuts don't hit the tool and also you're not, uh, the technician isn't pushing those welded on nuts out uh, as they're doing the repair. There's also two low profile um, dollies. Uh, this one's pictured. Uh, this one covers the full surface. There's another one that's half the size and, and that one's designed for working up towards the edges of the rail. Uh, this is a full frame repair that I had uh, sitting in front of me when I was body tech. Um, and this was uh, Chevy Suburban. And I'll, I'll show you the whole slide with some story on this later. But um, a frame dent, this was basically a dent in a frame. Um, you can see the, uh, the um, Estimator saw that he wrote this part up to replace due to the fact that the uh, this, uh, energy management zone right here was leaning in. Um, we took a look at it. That, that part was going to put the vehicle over the total threshold and um, the, had $6,000 worth of parts already sitting in the shop. So um, took another look at it and, and noticed that uh, this is just a dent from a um, fog lamp mounting bracket that was uh, attached to the cross member, or I'm sorry, the uh, front bumper reinforcement. Uh, so um, we, what we did was we, uh, we changed it from replace the part to repair the part, and um, we removed the reinforcement, took the reinforcement mounting bracket off, it was welded on here. Um, we removed the bracket, there wasn't even any damage to the bracket, we measured out the vehicle. Um, the vehicle had no sway at all, it was just very minor. Um, so we're using the tool, um, we reached inside, um, using some specific dollies, we were able to reach up into this really tight area and um, push that dent out. There was a little dent along here as well. We were able to push all that damage out and um, basically using a straight edge to see that the damage was all pushed out of there, um, measured it out and uh, returned it to its original shape. And um, the, uh, Cleaned it back up, put the corrosion protection back on, welded the, the you know, part back on, and uh, we had a viable repair that um, saved a $12,000 job from totaling out. Um, for a body shop, that was a, that was pretty huge because um, you know we all need more sales. Um, for myself as a technician, I was looking at uh, probably going home early that week, so it was great for me as a body tech. Um, and then also our uh, paint jobber also sold supplies for an entire front end group on a um, Chevy Suburban um, blending both doors, and uh, there was body flow on one of the doors. So um, it was a it was a pretty large repair 
and uh, you know, it's kind of a win for everybody. The customer uh, was going to get their vehicle back, and they wanted their vehicle back, so they wanted it repaired. Um, so it was pretty much a win for everybody involved. So we'll go to the next one here. So these, uh, this is a 2010 Toyota Tundra. These photos were sent to me from my uh, body shop in Texas. And uh, I found out uh, later uh, in talking to this body shop that uh, if you cannot replace a full frame, that you cannot replace a full frame on a pickup truck in Texas. That will uh, put a salvage title to the vehicle, and so it's rarely done. And this vehicle was in the body shop's uh, yard. It was about to be totaled out. And they found out about the rail saver right in time. As you can see, this has a, basically this was a side sway on the rail. The rail went sideways. The rail kind of buckled over the cross member here. They, they did the pulls, but the buckle remained. So um, this is the after pull buckle. The next photo, the technician, uh, they ordered the rail saver specifically for this job. The technician reached in there, pushed the damage out while well, he had a side pull going on on it. And um, this is an email that I had to delete the, the names of the people involved. But um, it, was, it was emailed to me after with the photos. Um, you can see the attached photos of the rail saver in action um, being used to repair a frame rail on a 2010 Toyota Tundra. By utilizing this amazing tool, we are able to save this repair from being a total loss. So um, we we're happy that we could uh, get them uh, to use this tool. and. And uh, they were happy to <laughs> save the vehicle from totaling out. I'm sure their customer was happy too. Uh, this was another uh, another person that was involved in the repair. Uh, he sent me this email. Uh, Tim, we had success with the uh, 2010 Toyota Tundra. The truck would have totaled without the rail uh, plus the rail saver saved the truck. Um, so uh, you know we're able to get quality repairs, uh, no deformations, no clean repair, and uh, they were able to increase their shop sales by ten thousand dollars that month. So, um, as far as repairability goes, um, the technician always needs to check the OEM procedures before attempting any repair. You need to know what the what the steel is made out of. Um, you need to know um, if it is a through repair. Uh, some of the repair procedures can be found online. Uh, I've got some links to those. Um, you want to follow their guidelines for proper repair. Um, and also, you want to check your repairs with a penetrating dye inspection product. Uh, this would be um, sprayed on the repair after repairs are done to check for cra any cracking. Uh, if any cracking is there, the, the part should be replaced. Um, we don't we don't want people repairing kinks um, or hard buckles. Um, this is a kind of a kink versus bend, kink versus buckle area. Uh, this is kind of a a lot of people um, that think that this would be repairable. Um, it's not. This is the kink. Uh, the metal is at um, uh, 180 to itself. Um, sharp bend. This is a high strength steel rail. As soon as this is pulled, there's going to be a crack that's created here. You've got a, um, a damaged uh, crush zone, uh, energy management zone. These are not repairable. Uh, we, we recommend replacing in these situations. Um, you, you can see here, it's, it's just not a good situation. This is the safety part of the vehicle. Uh, the other rail on the other side, uh, this had some pretty minor damages. It pulled in just a little bit here, and then it pulled in just right here, just a little bit. Um, we've had, you know, again, you need to, to follow your uh, manufacturer's uh, suggested repair techniques, but um, this part on this vehicle is, is replaceable, and it's spot over here. So these welds can be uh, removed, parts can be removed, access to repair, and then uh, the outer parts, uh, the new parts installed. So you know, really have to look at, um, you really have to look at your your OEM guidelines on that. ICAR has a little bit of information out there, um, but basically, um, you, know, you really need to check with OEM. Uh, and here is the, uh, some information. Uh, so that is repair information. They have a bulletin that's uh, called the uh, CRIB Collision Repair Information Bulletin uh, 176. You can pretty much Google that, and you will find their their um, 
standards on that. Um, General Motors and Ford, uh, they have both have a smooth repairability matrix. Um, these come from a study done by the uh, American uh, Steel and Iron Institute. Um, ICAR also has some information on it. Um, that ICAR will typically uh, refer to the OEM on that type of repair. Oh, hey, we just went to it. Okay. Uh, so this is the General Motors steel repairability matrix. And uh, as you can see, uh, coal repair is a yes up to um, 799 MPA. So um, I'm, I'm from my experiences, even uh, lower uh, high strength steels will crack when cold or, or attempted repair. So that's where it's really critical that you use the, uh, the penetrating die to check your repairs. So let's grab a few. Okay, so this is an um, end user testimonial. Uh, I met him at Auto Mechanica this year. Um, he was um, raving about this um, vehicle that they were able to repair. Um, the adjuster had um, uh, was convinced that the rail adjuster was convinced the rail needed to be replaced. Um, they uh, showed the adjuster that they could uh, they had a rail saver and they could uh, do the repairs. Um, they wound up uh, repairing this rail that was in question in 30 minutes, and uh, they were paid uh, five hours of the frame label labor to uh, do the repairs and um, they said they would pay five thousand dollars to save this sixteen thousand dollar job so um, we've got multiple um, multiple people who have told us they've been able to uh, save vehicles from total loss of this um, the, the two prior um, vehicles were both that situation and um, we regularly hear the you know that there was probably three other customers on Mechanica that I said the same thing, and it's seen that we'll hear seven or eight or nine customers come by and say that they've uh, had successful repairs of their state vehicles from totaling. So, uh, and basically, the, you know, this is uh, you hear about a triple win. Well, this is kind of a quadruple win because the, the customer can uh, retain their vehicle, um, collision repairs to repair more vehicles, so the body techs are staying employed longer and. Uh, and collision shop makes more sales. Um, the insurer uh, reduces their loss by uh, both reducing the cycle time and reducing the severity of the um, of the loss. And then uh, again, uh, your finished supplier sells more supplies for those vehicles that are saved from total loss. So it's really a huge win for the industry to be able to uh, uh, get this, this product into buying shops and let them uh, know how to use it. Uh, some YouTube links, uh, these are links to our videos, so I will, uh, just, those are there for people to take a look at. Um, I'll take you to our website. Um, so railsaver.com is our website, and um, I'm going to pop over to that real quick. So, sorry about this. There it is. Um, Rail Saver website, we've got some information for distributors here that they can download. Uh, on the on Rail Saver page, and here are some, some downloads right here. There's the front of the brochure and the inside of the brochure. Uh, if you're walking in uh, with your laptop, you can show this to your customers. Also, this is the full frame uh, Toyota repair example with the quotes from the uh, people involved, and uh, showing the, the photos that we had in the um, prior information. And then this is the Chevy Suburban repair example that uh, we had, and this kind of lays out how the um, you know this is uh, how uh, you know body shops need to take a look at the repairability um, and and make a, a quality decision on what is repairable and what is not repairable. Um, and often, if they have this product, uh, body tech knows how to use it. The estimator knows that it's there. Um, they can pretty much make a, a pretty good informed decision on what's repairable once they consult the OEM guidelines. And we have uh, this video here. 
right here. This is a video on how to set up the rail saver. Um, the, the very few times we have uh, issues with somebody that has, <laughs> has a problem with our tool, it's typically um, the setup of the tool. So kind of go through how to how to set up and what the dollies are used for. Um, also, this has a couple of tips in it about blocking up the back side of the repair. Um, there are some, uh, so sometimes there's welded on nuts and brackets in the way on the back side. And we go over how to how to uh, work around those details. Um, then we have a videos page. Um, we've got the same video and a couple others there. And it's loading molasses. Sorry about that. But uh, this is just a, a video showing the power of the tool. This is storage thick. Uh, um, seal um, under we had a couple dents there, and it shows how how it can still repair a pretty pretty massive amount of steel. Uh, this is a repair on a Chevy Suburban rear hit. Uh, it's hit on the trailer hitch. This happens a lot. You get a little um, crease right here on the bottom. I'm not going to show these videos because that's taking much time. Uh, there's a crease on the bottom here, and the technician had spent about four hours trying to get the dent out, and really wasn't making any headway. And I had shown the shop the rail here before, but they were hesitant on buying it, and uh, I got the call to come on out. And, you know, you if you can fix this, uh, we'll buy it, and they certainly did. Um, the body shop actually uh, employed. This is actually a good thing for any body shop. Uh, they uh, have their uh, receptionist use a GoPro to um, video tape their repairs before and after, and she posts them on YouTube and with a, a commercial for that. <laughs> For the company, it's kind of a pretty cool uh, promotion they do. Uh, this this repair right here was another body shop. They bought a rail saver, and they had the repair sitting there when uh, when I was selling it to them, but um, uh, they weren't uh, they didn't have authorization yet. Um, called me back when it was ready to go, so I came over and just videotaped a little bit of the repairs in process. And then got all the information I can really uh, go through on this. Um, you much throw it back to Melissa for any questions. We don't have any yet. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask Tim? And I should say I'm going to send um, everybody on the call, I'll, I'll send Tim's information and a copy of the presentation. So you'll see all those websites and have all that information that he was showing you on the slides. I don't see any questions. So um, you are yeah. very thorough. Well, let me um, let me go back and uh, just uh, briefly mention. So I've been to uh, I've been to some uh, paint pliers stores and and seen the rail saver on the shelf in a store. And um, it, just from my experience as being a body tech, um, the body technicians really need to know that this is out there. Um, if you have one in your in your paint store, um, take it out to the body shop and and show it to them. Um, typically, they don't know it exists, and uh, if you can show this to uh, body tech and the owner standing there, typically the body tech will say, "Well, I could have used it on such and such a car," and um, and I wish I would have known about it. Um, you know, that I, I typical response is uh, is I could have I could have used it on this car, I could have used it on that car, I could have used it last week or last month. So you know, if if you do have one of these in your paint supply store. Get it out, get into the hands of your your sales reps and have them just take it around and show their customers. Um, I went out to uh, went the the one store that I went to that had one on the shelf. Um, I got a hold of their outside sales rep and we went to three shops one morning and sold three of these. And so it's <laughs> it's just a matter of the body techs and the and the shop owners knowing it exists and, and knowing the capabilities of it. That's all I have. Okay. Well, we don't have any questions, so thank you, everybody, and we'll be in touch with future training opportunities. And again, we'll send Tim's information to you. All right. Thanks, Tim. Thank you all for being here.